Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. Resident Evil. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nemesis, and today we have the Wesker Spotlight. And so this one is going to have spoilers for the movie, so if you're not a Resident Evil fan, if you don't know the twists from the games that could potentially be in this movie, you know, I'd say turn away now. Don't watch this episode. And if you see this clip online featuring Tom Hopper as Wesker, I would say don't watch it. <laughs> it's it's a great little spot, and it's you learn a, lot of, a little bit more about the character, but uh, maybe a little too much about the character. <laughs> you actually will see some twists in the movie, with this character and so i would say turn away if you don't want to watch this video if you don't want any spoilers that's fine come back after the movie and you can discuss uh, with me the character of wesker at that point but for those of you who do know the the character you do know the evolution of them and where they go in the games we're going to get into all that in the movie version of it right now uh so tom hopper obviously shared the image like the 3d image of him um you know or 3d ish image whatever they want to call it where he's posing and in the wesker form and then you know with his outfit on and everything his star's outfit he doesn't have his sunglasses, and I, I, and I know some people kind of are like, where is that? And I, even I, I made the joke. I'm like, well, those are, you know, kind of what people know Wesker as is the guy with sunglasses. I'm sure we're going to see a scene with, with the sunglass in this movie, and I have a theory of when, and I'll get to that here. But it could contain spoilers, so that's why I wanted to do the spoiler warning up at the top. Um, but now that we got, you know, that uh, image out of the way of him in the outfit with the 3D image, we have the character spotlight trailer, which is up on screen here. And I'll try to have some footage of Wesker as well, video game stuff in between these. So with Wesker in this clip we see, they one, they show him do the piano puzzle, which is awesome. So I'm going to have to re-edit my intro, uh, and I want to include Jill Valentine from Resident Evil 5, the, the DLC, um, Lost in Nightmares. I, there's a scene where she plays a piano, so I want to include that footage, and then I think I'm going to try to get some footage after the movie comes out of Tom Hopper using his Palm Pilot thing to access the piano puzzle because then that way I can actually show, like I can have a, a full intro of ha uh, Hannah John Kamen playing the piano and having all the characters both in video game and in live action now playing the piano. <laughs> so that's that's really cool. So that's neat that Wesker is in the mansion. And like I said, when he says in the trailer, he goes, let's split up. I, I knew immediately. I'm like, well, of course he wants to split up. You know, he's one of the bad guys of this movie, uh, probably. So uh, if they go that route, and it looks like they are going that route. So, uh, so yeah. So he's when he's like, let's split up, and everyone and I saw them their trailer reactions. They're like, no, that's a bad idea. I'm like, not for Wesker though. He wants to split up. He wants to be with less people, and he even chooses Jill. You come with me, and then he's like, you know, Richard and Chris, you go that way. And that's what he wants. And we see uh, in this clip here, we see why. So Wesker, they said they want to make him a little bit more likable. And I think the reason for that is because it makes the twist of him turning on you hurt more. Uh, that's the thing about the characters. Like in the game, when Wesker is revealed to be the traitor uh, of the Stars team, it, it doesn't hit you that hard. I mean, you remember it because you're like, oh, okay. But he's not really in the game. And they purposely put him in the background whether you're playing as Chris or Jill and in Chris or Jill's game, you rarely see him. You see Barry most of the time and they try to set Barry up as the traitor. Um, but obviously, you know, that's a decoy if you've ever watched any movie or read any stories with stuff like that. So to me, like uh, without Barry on in, in the movie, you need that doubt, right? That Wesker's the bad guy in, in a way or part, part of the bad guys. And so by making him, or putting him in a potential relationship with Jill, although I feel it's very unprofessional uh, for someone to, you know, date their commanding officer or whatever like that. Um, it still uh, makes the twist hurt more, especially to a character like Jill, who seems like she doesn't take life too seriously. Like the we talked about her in the last episode, she has like a dark sense of humor. She's joking about how people are going to die and things like that, and she's kind of the odd person on the team, it seems. And so for her to maybe like someone like Wesker and and have faith or trust in him and then for that to be you know turned on her and she find out that this guy is uh actually a bad person and then he confronts her and says like yeah i work for umbrella he solves the piano puzzle and he turns and looks at her and he says to somebody else i don't know if he says it to jill or not but he's like i'm not giving you a choice but you see him shoot a zombie and he's holding jill by the collar um like come with me we're going to go down this secret tunnel that the piano puzzle opened up and so, so to me it seems like jill at that point will have a decision to make in the movie do i go with this guy who i'm kind of falling for even though he's doing things that are you know he's part of this whole awful thing that's happening to the city 
or do I or do I become a good person and a hero or prove that I am a good person and a hero? Because obviously at heart, Jill is. She's she's very much one of the the most badass characters in the video games. And I can see why people are so passionate about their their the choice of casting for her, but I still feel like as long as the character is brought to life, that's all that matters. And again, if you play the first video game, if you're just going off the first one, you don't get a lot of who Jill is as a person on a personal level. So the fact that they're adding some of that in and they're tying it po possibly to Wesker and making a love connection there, that means when he turns on the team, someone feels it more and you get an emotion out of a character. And that's what you want. You want emotion from these characters. And yes, there are other ways to do it. I'm sure people will argue with me about that. And that's fine. I, I will probably concede uh, to some of your ideas out there. But to me, I think this is still an effective way to do it. And it, it also is a, a crossroads for characters to actually enhance the plot of the story through their actions. And that is, you know, sometimes a lot of what writers, you know, have trouble with in scripts a lot of times. So I'm hoping it, it shines well here. I'm hoping this is a, a decent script, at least, and that this director, even if I feel like he misinterpreted Leon a little bit, I, I still hope uh, it, it's, you know, that he put a lot of heart into it um, to an extent, and uh, but also clearly filled it with a lot of Easter eggs because seeing the piano puzzle is such a cool thing. Like, I don't know. I f really freaked out when I saw it. I was like, I can't believe they actually put it in the movie. I mean, they have a lot of other things in a movie. I just didn't think they'd make time for puzzles. And so when, you know, he pulls out that little Palm Pilot thing and uh, looks at the, the how to solve the piano puzzle and how to play it, and then he does it and it opens a secret passage. I'm like, that's so great. That's also very reminiscent of the novel, S.D. Perry novel, where, you know, he's walking around and he has like a little Palm Pilot telling him, what keys open, which doors and stuff like that. And so, I don't know. I just thought that was neat. I thought that was a really cool look into Wesker and then hearing him in the trailer kind of turn on Jill and, and say like, I'm, you know, or turn on the team basically and say, I'm not giving you a choice. And you know, this is what, who I am really, you know? So, but the fact that they're trying to make him likable at first and, uh, at, you know, leading up to the twist and the shift, I think is a smart thing because then, you know, unfortunately this video came out and it spoiled it, but that would have been neat if this video didn't come out and they did something on Richard Aiken instead and they left the mystery for Wesker because then while you're watching the movie, you could have been like, wow, he's kind of a likable dude. Is he actually going to turn? Is he actually a bad guy in this version or is this a new take on the character? And then when the twist comes, even long-term fans could be like, well, okay, like I wasn't sure for a minute there. I figured they would, but I wasn't sure. Now we got this, so it's it seems definitive. <laughs> There's going to be a twist with Wesker. But um, the glasses thing, so I'll mention that real quick before we end this episode. Uh, I'm thinking in this that Wesker will probably get infected. We saw later that Jill, I think on one of the trailers, it looked like her eyes were white, which is matches what some of the other zombies had. And then there's even a part in Jill's trailer where she says, uh, you guys go. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna stay behind or something like that or just get everyone out of here. I'll stay behind. And I'm wondering if that's because she's going to go confront Wesker or, you know, Wesker's going to try to catch up to them and, you know, and stop them from escaping. And so she's like, no, I'll be the one who stays behind with Wesker. That could be interesting because then the mansion or whatever could blow up and you could think that both Wesker and Jill died. And then you could essentially recreate Res Evil 5 right there and have Wesker save Jill and, you know, uh, see that she's infected and come up with something like the scarab to, uh, you know, to prevent the infection from spreading. But then it makes her like a mindless drone that listens to everything he says or whatever. Like you could still do that and set that up. I mean, sadly, that means you don't get to do a nemesis story later on, um, which would suck. And I think a lot of fans would be upset with not getting a, a better rendition of nemesis. But uh, I don't know. I mean, this director's already thrown in stuff from Code Veronica in this movie, too, with the Ashford. So. Who knows? Who knows where it's really going to go? But uh, but I think if you have Wesker in this, get infected with whether it's a tyrant or not or whatever the case is, I think at the end his eyes will turn like he's infected, but he doesn't fully shift into a zombie and he's going to put his glasses on. And that'll probably, I'm going to guess that that might be either the ending scene or the post credit scene and maybe it's him pulling Jill out of the rubble and putting sunglasses on as the sun comes up or something. So, or pulling himself out of the rubble. Maybe Jill gets away in the end. I don't know. So I'm thinking that's that's how they're going to throw the glasses in there. <laughs> you know, because that's, that's so Hollywood now too. They're like, we want to show you the character before they become the character you know and love. And a lot of times I hate that because in, in Resident Evil 1, the video game, Wesker was Wesker. He wasn't like on a path to becoming Wesker. And so when they say, oh, we're going to show you the man behind the glasses and the, and the, the build up to him becoming evil Wesker. And it's like, but... 
there is no video game that really shows that. Maybe Resident Evil Zero a little bit, but Wesker's always been kind of bad. <laughs> so, like it's not an arc for him. Um, so the fact that they're making it an arc in this movie. It's interesting, but we'll have to see where it goes. It certainly sounds better in this movie than the live action TV show they're working on for Netflix, because that just doesn't sound like Wesker as a character at all, like a loving father or whatever. Like, I'm like, that doesn't describe Wesker. Uh, but this, I'm curious to see where this goes. Uh, so let me know what you think. If you have any theories about this movie or, you know, about Wesker himself and the Jill relationship or whatever, uh, let me know down below. Again, I pretty much stayed away from leaks and spoilers and all that stuff, but I that's one thing I heard because I think someone left that in one of my comments. So that's the only reason I mentioned it in the past two videos. So if there is, it seems like there's some kind of relationship going on, but I think it's there to make the, the you know, Wesker turning on them more effective. And if that's the case, then I'm okay with it at least from now, but I, I still need to see the movie to fully be okay with it and see how that's done in the movie because I'm still getting it partly out of context. So uh, anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. And I'll probably take a little bit of a break from Resident Evil for at least another week or two. We'll see if any more information comes out. And if anything big comes out, I'll definitely cover it for y'all. And at some point before the new movie comes out, I got to put up my audio commentary for the final chapter, uh, which means I got to rewatch it, uh, which means I'm going to, hate my life very soon because I hate the shit out of that movie, <laughs> but we'll, I'll do an audio commentary on that and I'll, we'll have that drop uh, as soon as possible. So thank you so much. I'll see you all in Raccoon City. Peace.